Hi and welcome back to Music and Gear. I got a box on the front porch today. I did not order it, so either a subscriber sent it to me or Guitar Gardens has sent it to me. And it's a model that I'm really not familiar with and I've done a search on it and nothing comes up on YouTube. This is an FFTS. So we're going to open up the box and find out what's actually in there. And it is in there really good. box is taped in two locations on each side. And in the moment of truth and the reveal. Checking the guitar in the container. It's in there really well. We've seen this box before. It's not a solid polystyrene container. It's been hollowed out. The FFLP with the access cut had the exact same shipping container. So most likely this guitar is made by the exact same vendor. Here we have a goodie bag. We got a truss rod tool and the cheap Radio Shack cord. And if you didn't know, this is my favorite part. And it's a Telecaster. And it has a weird designation for a Telecaster. Firefly usually uses TL. It is a very dark roasted maple neck on this guitar. Now that's very dark. It's got uh, locking tuners on it. It does have the angle back. I can see that it's a multi-piece body. It does have a belly carve, and an access carve, and it has humbuckers. It's like a honey burst. And it's got little styrofoam stickies all over it. Okay. Like we do every guitar on the channel, we're going to take this guitar apart. We're going to check everything. So let's get to it. Okay, I now have the guitar up on top of our stool here. We're going to go over the general fit and finish of the guitar. It is a traditionally cut Strat style body. When I mean traditional, it's flat on the top. They have not added an arm carve right here. But it does look like they've kind of stretched the design of the Tele a little bit. They've lengthened it. And it also looks like they've made it just a little bit narrow. I don't have another Tele right here that I can measure that's like a Fender or a Squire, but it does appear to be stretched 
and a little bit narrower. The top of the guitar does have a binding all the way around it. And that's due to this veneer top. Now this is not a flame maple top. It's just what I guess some would call just a plain maple veneer. I'm not seeing a center line through here, so it's probably one piece all the way across a thin maple veneer. Now we want to look at how well the maple veneer finishes in to this binding. We're going to start up here. And right out of the gate, right here, we have two black lines. And it is definitely under the finish. So I see the black line, then I see the amber color or the honey finish, and then I see the binding. So I'm not going to say that that is from taping off the binding because I see a little bit of the honey finish before we get to the binding. I'm not really too sure what would have caused that. Coming around, right here I feel three little bumps. And I see three little bumps. I'm not sure if this is fisheye or air pockets from where they sprayed the honey burst on the guitar. It could be where they sprayed the honey burst on and it fisheyed right there. It did not like whatever was on the bass finish of the guitar and it created three little fish eyes. Coming around this way, and I'm seeing a little bit of residue right here and that's from the glue up. And everywhere else it looks good. The edge is very smooth. And this edge has not had a detail done to it. They have not run the router around it. The edge is broken due to the finish coming over and ramping towards the end and the polishing that the guitar had. I do have a gauge. There really isn't any sense of putting the gauge on it because I know it's not a round over. It's just a broken edge. The maple veneer top looks okay. There is a little bit of blotchiness right here. I don't know if the camera will pick up the blotch. And this can happen using thin veneers. The thinner the veneer is, the more likely something like that will take place. So I do see a little blotchiness right here in the way the veneer top took the stain. Looking at the top in the light, I'm looking for seam lines. And I'm not seeing anything. The top is extremely smooth and even. It is a very smooth top. It's high gloss and it is very smooth. Feeling around the knobs, everything's very smooth. It is highly polished. Going over the sides of the guitar, Just running my finger around the side, seeing if I feel any strange issues from where the CNC cut out the body. And everything on the side feels really nice. It's very smooth. Now let's look for finishing errors. And I do see a couple little spots right here, and that's most likely from the glue on the binding that soaked into the wood. And it did not allow the stain to soak in. 
and I can see the count on the body. We have one, two, three, four pieces of wood. If you look really closely, you can see the seams. And again, you can see the seams because of the glue. So the stain won't take to the glued surface. There's a little bit of blotchiness right here. I don't know if the camera will pick up on that. But it feels very smooth. Flipping the guitar over and looking at the back of the guitar in the light. Again, extremely smooth. And this is a, an extremely even finish. You can tell by when you get a sheen on this from the light. Pick something in the room that will allow a straight line through it. If whatever you're looking at is perfectly straight in the room, it should be perfectly straight across the finish. You'll get a wave in it if this top finish isn't perfectly smooth. I'm using the front door and looking down the trim of the door to the reflection in the back of the guitar. It's extremely even. That is a very nice finish. And it is very smooth. Now on the back of the guitar, they have put a tummy carve. And it's a decent sized tummy carve. I like that. They've also put a carve right here. Makes it a little easier to get to the, the higher fretted notes. They have also come right across here, following my finger. They have chamfered the body and put an angle on the neck plate. They do that for comfort. Now just holding the guitar like this, the guitar does feel a little butt heavy. It's not bad, so there is no neck dive on this guitar. And it's very easy and comfy to hold. There's no issues there. This is a detail that Firefly does that I really do like. The plate itself and the screws are very smooth. They've also asked, added the black nylon gasket underneath the plate. Our roundovers right here appear to be, I'm going to say quarter inch. We're going to take a gauge at three eighths and one half. Here's our quarter inch part of the gauge. And that's what it is. It's a quarter inch round over. So starting right here, this through here is about one eighth by the neck plate. They blended this in to this chamfer. And starting right here is where they hit the quarter inch. And there is a slight deviation where this chamfer ramps out like this and then the body contour is going like this. So it leaves a little bit of a heel right here. It's not a, it's not a smooth transition. There is a spot right there in the center where one direction and the other direction aren't meeting at the exact same tangent location in the radius. So there is a slight error that I'll call it in this. This should come around and they should eliminate this. Blend this chamfer in a little bit better. Does it hurt anything? No. It's just I'm being very picky. Starting right here going around we have our quarter inch round over. 
and there does appear to be a flat spot right there and there is they have put a flat spot in the guitar right here and I'm assuming that's due to this jack and I guess that's one way of doing it I think I would have left this round and came in with a Forstner bit and just Forstnered the outer diameter of this jack to where this jack would be flush here and allow these two ends to stick out in the radius. I don't know if that would look goofy or not, but they have made a flat spot right here for this jack plate. That would be one of those things you'd have to do a prototype of do the Forstner bit, inset it, and let people look at it to see if they'd like that or if they like the flat detail better. I just wasn't expecting it. But there is a flat spot right here. Going around, we're still at the quarter inch round over. And then right here, it does get a little sharper. It feels like it's going to about an eighth. Again, we'll take our gauge. Yes, all through here is eighth. And right there it starts going. It's about three sixteenths. Yes, an eighth. So this is a little bit tighter right through here. And this is a pretty steep chamfer or rake angle on this belly carve. They have eased this into the back side of the guitar. That's nicely done. Then we pick up our quarter inch radius right to here and then it blends to a one eighth radius around this angled heel for our seat cut on the neck. Here we have our switch cover. It does not appear to be deflecting. And it is almost perfectly flush with the guitar. It's flush from here all the way to here. And then from here to about there, it's about a half a millimeter below the top surface of the guitar. There is a little bounce to our cover right there. This is for our pots. So the plate cover is bouncing just a little bit right there. There are four screws. And this one is pretty consistent all the way around. Yes, it's very consistent. This one's about a half a millimeter, maybe 0.25 millimeters below the surface of the guitar. We'll know more when we take it off and see if there's any foam pads in there from them cheating. But feeling it right here, I don't feel it squishing. So that's nicely done. Let's look at our neck pocket. This ear right here appears to be 90 degrees to the neck. And the only break or chamfer or relief done to this is just from the finish and breaking that edge. It's about a sixteenth. It is fitting tight. Our neck to body is extremely tight on this side and there is a slight crack on this side. And when I say slight, it's probably 128th of an inch, but there, there is a slight crack. And you can pick up smaller cracks like that on these lighter finishes. 
So when you have a light finished guitar, it really shows every imperfection because the light refracts off of it. And you can really see shadow lines really easily. So there is an ever so slight gap right where my finger is. Coming around underneath to the neck fitting into the back side of the guitar, that looks tight. Looking at our route in the guitar in relation to the route in the neck for the spoke wheel on the truss rod adjustment. The neck from here to here is a smaller distance than the route in the body. The neck seems to stick out past the route in the body about a millimeter on both sides. It is consistent, but they're not at the same width. Looking at our route right here, it is tight. This is also tight, and they've broken that edge as well. Feeling the neck to the body, The body sticks out past the neck just a little bit. It's a nice transition. It's very, very well done. I am also not seeing a crack here. It looks to be tight to the body. There is, well, there is just ever so slight a black line right there. So if there is a shim in the neck pocket, it's going to be very small. Let's look at our pickup rings. They are setting down tight and true to the body. They're not moving. Looking at our pickup. The pickups are very firm. When I push on the pickup, it returns. They're not staying crooked. This one, again, it's tight down even to the body. There's no cracks. Let's check the pickup. And again, the pickup is firm. It's not floating around. And when you turn it, it is returning parallel to the body. So that's nicely done. The pickup finish, there's a little bit of discolorization around a couple of the screws. And that could clean up. I don't know. I'm just letting you know what I see. That may or may not clean up. Actually, running my finger across it, that mark is disappearing. So that will most likely clean up. Looking at our hardware here, it appears to be firm in the body. We'll know more when we take the strings off. But the finish looks nice. The adjusters for the intonation are facing the neck. And that is a YouTube controversy from day one. Do the adjusters go to this side or this side? I don't know. This particular guitar has the adjusters facing the neck. But the finish on the hardware looks nice. looks very nice. I don't see any scratches on this piece at all. Looking at our tail piece, it is nice as well. I'm not seeing any scratches or problems from where they put the screwdriver in and run these in and it slipped and burgered up the screw. It does not feel sharp. It is very smooth. 
it looks to be very nice hardware. We also have a small pick guard here. And it does not seem to be bouncing. There's only four screws holding it. But it does appear to be tight and laying flat to the body. Let's look at our switch. There's a little jiggle in the switch. Less jiggle in the bridge position and neck position. More jiggle in the center position. As far as the throw, this switch has a nice spring kick to it. But it also has a very solid engagement. And it feels solid in the neck position and the bridge position. So I don't think you would have to worry about this switch getting knocked out of position by jumping around. I think the switch is okay. We'll, we'll know more when we look at the electronics. We do have two volume knobs and two tone knobs. And I'm assuming it's one volume and one tone for each humbucker. Let's look at our first one and get a feel for it. The first volume is very smooth. And it is in a good position to roll off the bridge to control with your pinky. Our second volume it's smooth as well. This volume is setting behind the bridge. So as you're playing, if you're wanting to roll this one back with your pinky, it is set behind the bridge. It's going to be a little harder to get to. But it does feel smooth. Now let's look at both of our tones. That tone feels good. And this tone feels good. I'm also looking to see if the knob is wobbling on the guitar. And these cone-shaped knobs, you can really see if they're not put on right. They'll, the bottom of the knob will sit there and do the hula dance. That one looks nice. That one looks nice. That one looks nice. And there is just a little bit of variation when I turn this one. And you can look at the gap between the body and the bottom of the knob as you turn it. That gap should stay consistent. Which on these three it does. This one has a little wobble to it, but they all feel very smooth. Now let's go down our neck and let's look at the neck on this guitar. When I first took it out of the bag, this is a very dark roasted Canadian maple neck. It it almost looks like there's a stain applied to it. And maybe they did that. But it is a very dark roasted maple neck. It is truly very, very pretty. It is very nice. Feeling the neck and how smooth it is. And our transitions here. very smooth. Let's feel our transition here. It's quite smooth. What I'm looking for is consistency. 
I don't want a super smooth spot and then feel grit. Is this neck butter smooth? No, it is not. But it is very smooth. It's a very consistent feel. It, it is well done. Not feeling anything through here or through here. It feels smooth and the transition is even. Feeling our fingerboard to the neck. They have broken that edge. So it's nice and smooth. I like that. Let's look at this side. Yep, they have broken that edge as well. And all that means is this radius is coming up at least a sixteenth of an inch into the rosewood fingerboard. I like that. It makes the neck feel very smooth. Looking at the top of the headstock, I can feel the Firefly logo and the JSM logo. This feels exactly like the back of the neck. And I do feel a little variation right there over the JSM logo. We have locking tuning keys and two string trees. Now in guitar gardens, they claim this is a bone nut and I'm feeling the bone nut to the side of the neck. This side here is perfectly flush and our low E side is sticking out just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yep. But the edges and the corners of the nut have been broken. So they're not sharp. The nut is also been fouled down across the top, so there's not a lot of nut sticking up past the string. Going down our fretboard, feeling our ball in frets, I don't feel any sharp frets. That is the nature of ball in frets. I have never received a guitar with ball in frets that had sharp frets. And again, where ball in frets have a tendency of failing is how they're set in the guitar and how they're cut. So looking down this neck, I see two frets. The rest of them are really, really good. We have a fret right at my thumb, right there, and a fret right at my thumb, right there. And both of those frets are short on this side and long on this side. So they just wasn't quite placed right on the neck when they were pressed in. And I don't know if the camera will pick up on it, but I'll try to get the right angle. Is this the best guitar to date? No, it is not. I would say the Firefly FFST in purple, black and purple that we did, the neck on that guitar was 100% spot on. I'm gonna put this guitar at a very close second. There's only two frets that I see that are out of whack. And they're just barely out of whack. This one's done very, very well. I also really like these inlays that Firefly has been using. I don't know if that's real mother of pearl or a fake mother of pearl. Either way, 
It's pretty. It is sharp looking. I'm trying to move the guitar back and forth so you can see it. They are some sharp looking inlays. We also have placement dots across the top of the fretboard here. Looking at our straps, this one appears to be in the center of the body and appears to be tight. This one's nicely set as well and it also appears to be good and tight. Well, I believe that's going to cover our general fit and finish. We'll get into more details as we take the neck off the guitar, open up the cavities, and really take this guitar apart and see the build quality. All right, now we're going to take our gauge, and we're going to check the relief on the neck the way it was sent to me from Guitar Gardens. I'm going to assume that this is 25.5. Let's stand the guitar up. And the neck on this guitar is perfectly straight. There is zero relief. And again, our gauge is gauging the top of the fretboard wood. It has nothing to do with the frets. So the wood fretboard itself is perfectly straight. Now I'm going to take my Stumac action gauge and we're going to check the action height the way it was sent to me from Guitar Gardens. And our low E is set exactly on the 12th at 0 0.070. Our high E is just a little above 0 0.060. So I'm going to call that 0 0.062 or 0 0.063 on our high E. Now the part everyone's been waiting for, fret rockering. <laughs> it's become a channel staple here. I'm going to go through in squirrel mode and check these frets. And I'll go out of squirrel mode if I find a bad fret. And that's how a guitar should be. Zero problems with the fretwork. 100% spot on. 100%. Good job, Firefly. That is a very leveled fret work. <laughs> Zero issues. And you know, that really helps me in the editing too. That saves me at least 30 minutes. <laughs> Some of these guitars, it's literally 35, 40 minutes because I got to stop and put so many fades in. This guitar has zero issues. I thought there was a spot up here. I did shift the fret rocker. Um, the spot's not there. It's very well done. Now let's look at the top of these frets because it's quite obvious that they did level the frets. And I'm looking for scratches going across the fretwork. Did they, after leveling these frets, 
go back and sand the scratches out and then clean the frets and polish the frets. So that's what I'm going to look at right here. And I do see a couple marks going across the fretboard. They are light, but they are present. And all of those marks, when I get them in the light, are dead center on the fret. So what that is telling me is that's a ghosting mark from them leveling the fret. I do not see any scratches going this way in that mark. I do, however, see a couple little scratches going this way. So that means they did clean the fret they just didn't get it 100% clean to where this top edge, when you crown the fret with your file, you're going to put a Sharpie mark across it, and you crown to that Sharpie mark. And you want a little tiny black line left over, and then you go back and clean that. When they went back and cleaned that, they did clean it. They just didn't get it super polished like the rest of the fret. That's going to be my guess. But it is ever so slight. And I only see it when I get it in a certain light. As far as the fret feel, The frets feel nice. I'm going to say that these frets were polished. They're not super smooth polished. I would say the average guitar player prefers this fret feel. A lot of, well, I won't say a lot. There are some guitar players that don't like the highly polished fret feel. They feel the neck is just too slinky feeling, too slick feeling. This neck feels slick, but it's not overly slick. It's a nice, nice job. Now, I have some radius gauges. I have a 12 right here. And I'm going to guess at the neck, just kind of playing around with it. It feels like a 12 or a 14. It's definitely not a 9.5 or a 10 like a traditional Strat. It is, it has a much flatter feel to it. So let's take our 12. And put on the bottom of the neck. And I do see a crack here. Starting about right where my finger is to about right here. And it is touching on either end. So it is not a 12. Let's check the top. Now at the top, it could be just the light. It is touching on either side, but I do still see a crack in the center. It's not, it doesn't appear to be as large as it was down here. So let's take a a 14. And let's check it with a 14. That looks really close. I do I do see just ever so slight of a crack underneath the center. And it's such a light crack that I know it's not a 15.
and up here it looks the same all the way across. So I'm going to say that this neck has a 14 inch radius on it. Down here it could be maybe 14.25, but I'm going to I'm going to say it's a 14 inch radius. Okay, something I forgot to do is to get some measurements on this neck. So I'm going to loosen the first three strings so I can get my calipers in and do some measuring. Okay, I have the first three strings loosened, but we're going to start at the top and get some width. Let's see what the measurement is at the nut. And at the nut, we have 42 millimeters. Now let's check it at our 12. And at the 12th, we have just a little over 52. I'm going to call that 52.25. And now let's get a measurement down here at our 22nd. And at the 22nd, we have 58 millimeters. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to measure right behind the first fret from the top of the wood to the back side of the neck, so wood to wood. So wood to wood, we have 21 millimeters. So let's do the exact same thing, but now I'm going to measure from the top of the fret to the back side of the neck. we have 22 millimeters. Now I'm going to measure right at our 12th from the top of the wood to the bottom of the neck. We have 22 millimeters. Now let's measure it from the top of the fret to the bottom of the neck. And it looks like we have 23.5. So it looks like these frets are about 1.5 millimeters in height. There is a slight discrepancy in them. So I think they're just a fraction under 1.5 millimeters, probably 1.4 millimeters. All right, I now have the Robertson strobe tuner plugged into the guitar. We want to check the intonation on the guitar. First, we're going to check the 12th and our first fretted note. Then we're going to go through and get an average of 
how flat or sharp each fretted node is to see how it was set up from the factory. So let's start with our low E. And there's our E, open, first fretted note. Twelve, open. Twelve, that's very, very close. It might be just a fraction flat. Open, first fretted note. And our F is definitely sharp. There's our A, A on the 12th, open, 12th, open, 12th. So the A is just a fraction sharp, I think, open. First fretted note. And our A sharp is a fraction sharp. There's our D. D on the 12th. And that is spot on. Twelfth. Yes, that's twice that it locked. Open. Yes, that's really good. It might be just a fraction flat. D open. D first fretted note. Just a fraction sharp. There's our G. G on the 12th. Open, 12th, open, 12th. I think the G is just a fraction sharp. G open, G first fretted note. And our G sharp is just a fraction sharp. There's our B, B on the 12th, B open, B on the 12th. Again, just a fraction sharp, B open, B first fretted note. And our C is just a fraction sharp as well. There's our high E, high E on the 12th, open, 12th, so just a fraction sharp, open, high E first fretted note, and just a fraction sharp. So the guitar is just slightly on the sharp side when checking just to the 12th. Now let's get an average of what each fretted note is doing. This is our first fretted note on our low E. So our low E is definitely set to the high side. 
There's A. And our A as well is set to the high side. There's our D. And I would say our D is almost perfect. I would move the saddle back just a little bit. I believe there was one more note or two more notes that were sharp versus the flat. There's our open G. And our G string is set definitely on average sharp. There's our B string. And our B is just a fraction sharp on average. There's our open high E. And our high E string is set on average sharp as well. But going over the fretted notes, I can tell this guitar would intonate, would intonate very well. Okay, now let's move on to our next phase where we actually take the strings off the guitar, pull the pickups out, look at the electronics, and take the neck off the guitar. All right, the first thing that we need to do is I need to take the strings off the guitar. So I'm gonna go into squirrel mode and remove all the strings on the guitar. All right, now let's get to looking at this guitar. And for those of you that was curious, the strings we cut off all have the brass ball ends. Okay, I am now going to remove the pickups and I'm gonna go in squirrel mode. All right, we're gonna put a towel right here on the guitar so I don't scratch it. And let's pull the pickups out. Yeah. 
And on the back of the pickups, we can see that they did solder the top cover to the pickups. And the neck pickup is marked in. And they've done the exact same thing with the bridge pickup. It's just marked with a B and they have soldered the top cover to the base of the pickup. Looking at the spring, this is not a cone spring. It is a standard spring. And on the neck pickup, it's exactly the same. It's just a standard spring. Looking at our routes here, we can see they went a little extra deep where the screws go. And again, they've used the cavity here to fish the wires through and over to the switch location. And we do see some marking in here. And these are tool paths. So it looks like this is probably a 13 millimeter end mill bit that they've used. I can see a couple passes here. The sides of the routes look good. And the paint has a little texture to it, but I'm not seeing a lot of particulate that was in here when it was done. And we can see that this route routine was also done at the same time that this route was put into the guitar. And this is very crisp, very clean. It's nicely done. Now for those of you that are thinking about modifying the guitar, I have my calibers here. We're going to get some widths. So across looks like we have 42 millimeters. Looks like we have 76 millimeters from here to here and then our full route all the way across with the ears on the pickups looks like 90 millimeters even. Our depth To the bottom side of the pickup looks like it's 17 millimeters and then our depth where the screws are located is coming in at 28 millimeters So I'm going to go back into squirrel mode and reinstall the pickups. Okay, now that the strings are off the guitar, we're going to check how well the hardware was mounted. And there is a little jiggle in our hardware. If I take this off, we can feel there's some jiggle in the screw. Now there is a trick that you can do to this. If you have some pencils, 
little round pencil that has the round eraser. Take the eraser out of the pencil, cut it in half, unscrew this, and stick that end of that eraser down in the hole, and then re-thread this down into the hole. The eraser will expand into the bottom of the hole. It will get rid of this jiggle that's in there. It also applies pressure to the top of the screw, almost like a spring, and it prevents these from moving over time. So that's our trick for the day. Now I'm going to flip the guitar over and we're going to look at the electronics. All right, now I'm going to go into squirrel mode and I'm going to remove both covers and take the screws out of the jack. That way we can look at the electronics. All right, let's take our first cover off. And no shielding. But we do have two little foam pads on it, just two. Looking at our cover over here, again, no shielding, but no pads. Now let's look in our first cavity. Looking in our first cavity, we do have full-size pots. And these pots are marked P24K series. And it says A500K, so they are 500K pots. And all four pots are the same. Looking at our wiring right here, I see some tape. Going into that tape is a white and green wire. And this one's done the exact same way, white and green wire. So that's telling me that if you wanted to do a coil split on these pickups, you could do that. You could put a push-pull volumes in the guitar and split the coils. Now let's look at our solder joints. Looking at our solder joints here, I do see sheen on our top ones. These two here are very nice. This one's not bad. This one right here is a little on the skimpy side. Now these two this one right here is very skimpy. Pushing on it, it is solid. There is a good bond there, but not very much solder. This one has a good sheen. This one has sheen, but it looks kind of sloppy. Now let's look at our tab here. They did not feed the wire through the hole. So the wires laid across the terminal and then bonded. Looking at these, these are done the same way. They did not feed the wire through the terminal hole. They're just bonded on the top. I would say the terminal bonds are so-so. They, they, are, they are not great. I do see some wire fray right here. I like when they put a piece of shrink tubing right here to encapsulate the shield part of this wire that's uh, shielding this, this braided wire that goes around the, the other wires, it'll fray 
A lot of people will try to tin that right up to this spot, but even if you do that, you really should put a piece of shrink tubing on it. Now let's go up and look at our switch. Looking at our switch, I'm going to pull the wire out here. And this is what I mean. They've twisted this together and they've just tinned it so it doesn't fray apart. There's quite a bit of solder on that. It is solid. And again, they did not go through the terminal holes. They just laid the wire on the terminal and bonded it. And again, pretty, pretty skimpy on the solder. Pushing on the switch and trying to rotate the switch, it is secured properly. Now let's look at our jack. Looking at our jack, you can definitely see it right where my thumb is. They've laid the white wire just across the terminal and bonded it. They did not go through the hole. And there's no solder on that side. So pretty skimpy. Our ground, again, it's just laid on top of the terminal. But they did put enough solder on it to where it went through the terminal hole to the other side. Feeling it. There's a little bit of pressure on it. It's okay. It's not a pure tone jack, but it's okay. Alrighty, I'm going to go back into squirrel mode and reassemble the guitar. All right, now it's time to take the neck off this guitar and look at the neck pocket. We can see there is some debris in the neck pocket. Now let's flip the guitar over and actually look at the pocket. There is no shim. But the neck pocket is semi-clean as far as debris in the finish. The debris in the hole is from the screws. Looking at it, Looking at our route and our corner. It looks good. We can tell that they did a little cleaning right here. You can notice how this surface has finish on it. And they did clean the pocket a little bit right here to remove some finish to get that neck alignment right. That's nice to see. That means that the guitar was dry fitted and then 
tuned. They had to make a correction when they set the neck. So they set the neck, saw that there was an error, then went back and fixed their error. Now let's take the screws off and let's double check and make sure there's no hidden treasures underneath the plate. And we can see that there was no issues here. This hole here is wallowed out just a little bit, but it hasn't been misdrilled. There's not another hole here or a hole here like we've seen on some other guitars. Before I reassemble this, I am going to get this debris scratched off. Make sure the bottom of our plate is clear. And if you noticed, I oriented the screws how they came out of the guitar. That way we can reassemble it the exact same way. And I have my pointer finger in the neck pocket right underneath that hole and I'm putting that screw right to where I can just barely feel the tip of that screw in the neck pocket and I'm stopping now I'm going to flip the guitar over and we're going to clean out that neck pocket And some would say that this is tool abuse. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to sand it. If you just kind of scrape it. And when you put the screws back in, believe it or not, you're going to get a little bit of particulate back in the neck pocket from running those screws back up into the neck. So each time you remove your neck, just get in there and make sure that you get that out. And it'll want to stick because if that neck is tight to the body, it pushes that particulate into that little bit of finish and it actually sticks and hangs up there. Now let's look at the back of our neck and we want to feel the holes. If the hole was drilled too small you'll feel a large ridge right here where when the screw went into the the maple it pushes the wood fibers apart and puts a little ridge right there. This guitar was drilled properly. There is just an ever so slight ridge, but that's normal. Now here, we want to get that off the neck. So I'm going to take my little gauge and I'm literally just going to scrape. That's all you have to do. Okay, now that we've scraped off the back side of the neck, I'm going to reset it into the neck pocket.
And again, if you choose to use an impact here, that's on you. Now I'm just going to make sure and kind of look for obvious problems. Okay, when setting a neck, you have two ways of doing it. You can do a center line down the neck to the center of your bridge, and in this case, center of this hole, center of this hole, or the pins, put a mark to the center here straight line, same distance from this line to the edge of the neck to center a line to this edge of the neck. Or you can cheat, which is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to install the strings lightly and then adjust the neck to where I have the same offset from my low E from the side of the string to the side of the neck to the high E side of the string to the side of the neck. So let's grab some strings and get some strings on this guitar. Okay, now we're ready to get some strings back on this guitar. These are the strings that I'm going to be installing. Here's our tailpiece. All right, now I'm gonna tune the instrument and check the intonation. We've had the neck off the guitar. We've added two little erasers 
inside the boreholes here to stabilize our bridge. With all that, we need to reset the intonation and get the guitar tuned. And then we're ready for a demo. Okay, I now have the guitar plugged into the multimeter. We are in the bridge position. The volumes and the tones are all the way up. In the bridge position, we're reading 17.26 to 17.28. In the center position, we're reading 7.69. And in the neck position, 10.77. All right, it's time to check the weight on the guitar. I have the scale on the bench. We're on grams, and it is zeroed out. So in grams, we have 3,614. And in pounds, we have 7 pounds, 15.5 ounces. Okay, I have the guitar tuned to 440. I have reset the intonation on this guitar to an average across the fretboard. The 12th E is not perfectly in tune with the open E. It is based on an average sharp and flat all the way across. Every string is done the exact same way. I now have the guitar plugged into my Applied Research Technology 2 preamp. That is running into a ProValve 6L6 power amp into four greenback Celestion drivers. We're gonna start out just doing some clean tones. Now I'm in the bridge position. The volumes and tones are all the way up. center position. turned on my TS9 Ibanez Tube Screamer and we are in the bridge position.
that was our bridge position. Now going to our center position. <laughs> Okay, we're just going to kind of mix it up. I still have the TS9 on. We are still on the clean channel. center position. Okay, I now have the ART switched over to the high gain channel. We're just going to play some high gain stuff. <laughs> Okay, that's going to conclude our demo section on the Firefly. We did a very thorough review of this guitar. When we took the neck off, we were looking at the neck pocket and there were signs that they had went in there and removed part of the finish. To me, that tells me that there's some quality control from the vendor that Firefly is using manufacturing this guitar. The guitar was assembled, they found an error, they resolved the error, then it was sent to Firefly. To me, that makes me feel good. That means someone is paying attention at the factory, looking at these guitars before they put them in the box and send them over here. The neck on this guitar is very nice. It has a nice feel to it. And it's an extremely dark roasted maple. It's very pretty. 
The fit and finish on the body is also done really well. We did find a little fish eye right here and a black mark right here. And that's all that I could find on the guitar. Everything else is done really well. Even the cavities, when we opened up the cavities, the routing is done well as well. The guitar sounds good. It has a nice clean sound. It does well with a little crunch and it also does well with high gain. I'm kind of curious what these pickups would sound like with a coil split. We did see that we could coil split these when we were looking at the electronics on the guitar. I think it might be a really good guitar to do that experiment on. It would really open up a lot of sounds to it. If you bought one of these guitars and you had a completely different experience than the one that I've had during this review, please post below. But if you bought one and it's exactly like this one, this is a well-made guitar. Again, post below. The more people that post, the more information that will be available for someone that's thinking about buying this instrument. They'll have more knowledge and more ability to look at the asking price and say, can I live with these issues for the asking price of this guitar? And that's what this channel's about. I want to review the guitar and point out what I find in the guitar. That's my job. It's your job to decide whether or not the asking price is worth it to you. Anyway, if you haven't already, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. When I see the subscriber count go up, it makes me feel good. It lets me know that you guys like the highly detailed review videos that we've been doing here. Anyway, thank you for clicking on the video. It's pretty. Mm-hmm.